What is going on, Wastelanders? It is me, the Lone Vault Wanderer, and if you can't tell, I'm sick as a dog. I've all but lost my voice, but this interview came up today, and I really thought that I should cover it. It was conducted by Jeff Keeley, who is a journalist at GameTrailers.com, and he was interviewing a number of people at QuakeCon, one of which included Pete Hines of Bethesda, and Pete Hines in this specifically Bethesda orientated episode, which I will link in the description below if you wanted to check it out for yourself. Pete Hines has a number of important things, I think, and it's funny, if you do go on to watch this interview, the whole interview has kind of like an undertone of Fallout 4, even though Fallout is only mentioned a couple of times. And with what Pete Hines is saying, you can kind of get the hint that he's essentially talking about Fallout 4, but just not saying Fallout. So check it out, but I have extracted the main quotes from that interview and I will talk about and put them up on the screen as I do, but um, this is going to be a fairly long video because he does say a large number of things, but I will try my best to keep my opinions rather limited so that I could spend more time covering exactly what Pete Hines has said. So anyways, here's a number of important quotes. Pete Hines says that, we don't do sequel stuff, we as in Bethesda. We haven't done anything like year after year after year. We're going to do another one of these, and we're going to bounce it back and forth between studio to studio. We feel like making a great game is all where it has to start, and if you do that, everything else will come out of it. And that means you can't just churn stuff out every 9 months or 12 months and have it be successful. You need to go back and rethink what made the last game great, and how do we push that forward even more. That's why there is so long between Elder Scrolls games, and that's why there wasn't a Dishonored 2, 3, and 4, one right after the other. Teams need time to figure out what they want to do next and why it's going to be different. Jeff Keighley asks, Yet there's this fascination amongst fans that they want you to announce things constantly, when sometimes they're just not ready to be announced. You have to deal with this all the time on the internet. I'm sure it's a tribute to how much people care, but there is this tension. Even if you're developing a game that's not announced yet, you take the time to make sure it's ready to talk about, yet people don't seem to understand that. Pete Hines responds that it comes from a love. They're not asking for games that they don't care about or don't want to play. People want to be involved and they want to know. Unfortunately, we, Bethesda, have a slightly different way of going about things. We aren't just going to add a 1 to the name of the last thing that we made and stick it out in 12 months. We have a different way of putting things out. We like to take our time. We like to give the developers the ability to say, you don't have to just go back to the last thing. If you want to do a new IP, we should talk about that. We like to change things up. You should never expect that you are going to get the info when you want. We may or we may not be working on the thing that you expect us to be working on. I hope that he's not talking about Fallout 4 there, but I doubt it. Um, it comes out of the devs. We're not crowdsourcing our next project to say, everybody vote and decide what the studio is doing. I have a lot more faith in Todd Howard saying, this is what I want to do next. We're going to stick with that. So when those guys are ready to talk about the games, that's when we'll talk about them and not before. Pete Hines continues later on, we mention games that don't match up to expectations. We're not going to go blindly forward with something that isn't living up to our own expectations. We're pretty self-aware of when we make a good game and games that just don't get there. We continue to redouble our efforts to try and make sure the game is as good as it needs to be. We continue to stay focused on quality and make decisions that will ultimately result in the best game. Jeff Keighley asks, Pete, what about the idea of the community being more open with what you're developing? There has been a trend in that direction. How are you guys adapting to that? And just to give you guys a bit of context, before in the interview they were talking about how developers are being more open with the games that they're developing more earlier on in the development cycle and saying, this is exactly what we're working on, we want your feedback, here is a beta, etc. And just getting their game and the ideas about the game much earlier in the development process out to the public in order for fans to stay involved, to stay informed, and to be able to give their feedback, which can contribute to the final package product of the game. And Pete Hines responds, I think there's a lot of people who would argue that we are not. Simply by my refusal to tell them what they want to know, I'm going counter that trend. And he's referring to people constantly asking him about Fallout 4, by the way, if you didn't get the hint. Um, I think we are doing a variety of things today that are totally different to the way that we might have done them five years ago. I think we continue to evolve how we want to talk about games and when, but we still have this strongly held belief that we want to be able to demonstrate the game in a certain way, and not 
not just talk about how it's going to be, but say, here it is. I'm not just talking about this feature. Skyrim is the perfect example. We could have talked a lot about that stuff before showing any of it, but the impact was that Todd had a demo wherein he showed how all of those things were going to work, and that was so much more powerful, because you saw how dual wielding worked, and how having a spell in one hand, and a sword in the other, and how that felt, as opposed to saying, you can have a sword in one hand, and a spell in the other, and yeah, that sounds kind of cool, but then you see someone do it in the game, and you're like, that's way cooler, that's awesome. So it's being able to demonstrate and show you, here it is manifested. It isn't just an idea on a paper, we actually figured it out. We feel that's an important point to get a game to before you start talking about it, because otherwise it's just theory and ideas on a page. And the last quote he finishes off is by saying, We continue to think about and hopefully evolve the ways in which we do that. Doing this Doom thing at QuakeCon is something that we've never done before. The idea was that we want to go to the fans and reassure them that we know what we are doing, we're making something that you should be excited about, and it's going to be a while before we talk about it, but in the meantime, here's a little glimpse behind the curtain. That's something that we never would have done before on any game. So we are continuing to try and figure out ways to involve the community, but do it at a time to show it, as opposed to saying, here's what it's going to be like, but we can't actually show you anything in the game. So that's everything that Pete Hines has said, and I think that he brings up a number of great points and I just want to give my quick opinions before this video becomes too long. Firstly, Bethesda is just one of those companies that likes to take its time with things and announce things when it's ready and people have to accept that and deal with it. You can't go on to love Fallout and love Skyrim because they're such huge and expansive open world games and games that take so long to develop because they are so ambitious in their ideals and in what they're trying to produce and then turn around and say, but you have to announce the game early and tell us exactly what you are doing. Bethesda is just not going to do that. It has not set that kind of trend. We know that it takes them years and years, three to four, five years, whatever, to develop a game to create a truly great product that perhaps isn't so polished because the games are so large and they inevitably will have some bugs exactly like with Fallout, exactly like with Skyrim, but it's still going to be a great game that years down the track, fans are going to appreciate the time and effort that was put into development. So when Pete Hines goes on to say, that's the way we do things. We like to take our time with announcements and all of that. You've got to believe him because that's the way Bethesda has been in the past. And he also mentions that it's not necessarily that Pete is holding back the announcement of Fallout. It's the developers. Pete Hines is just a PR and marketing guy. Yes, he has some influence at the company. But at the end of the day, it's the developers that dictate when a game is going to be announced, when the game is essentially going to be published. The dynamic at Bethesda is completely different to say at Activision, when Activision says to Infinity Ward and says to Treyarch with Call of Duty that you have to announce the game at this date, you have to release the game in November of this year every two years, and now it's obviously every three years, but in that kind of company, the dynamic is that such that the publishers hold the most sway and dictate the terms with regards to when games are announced and when games are published. But Bethesda are more the kind of publisher that says, we're going to sit back, let the devs do what they do. If a game needs to be held back for another couple of months, we're going to do that. If a game is just not ready for an announcement, then we're just not going to announce the game. And the second thing that I wanted to bring up is that fans need to stop adopting this kind of bullying tactic whereby they go to a publisher's personal Twitter account like with Pete Hines and I think Pete Hines receives the brunt of it all because Todd Howard doesn't have a Twitter himself but adopting this bullying kind of tactics and make threats and accusations borderline death threats calling Pete Hines a dickhead an asshole because he's not talking about Fallout 4 and expect that kind of behavior is going to produce a response Pete Hines is a tough guy, he's going to deal with it, right? But it still doesn't make it acceptable for fans of a series to act like three-year-olds, throw a tantrum when things aren't going their way, and when the games that they want aren't being announced. If you're a true fan of the series, just be goddamn patient for God's sakes. It's not fine for you to go to Pete Hines' account and throw death threats his way, and throw accusations and criticisms his way, just because he's not throwing you a bone, and just because you don't have a toy to play with for the next year or two. You just need to learn to be a little bit more patient and act your age. I mean, this is the kind of stuff, and Pete Hines retweeted a 
article which talked about this. This is the kind of behavior, such negative and cynical and narcissistic behavior, which is driving people away from the video game industry. It can become so toxic at times that developers may not want to go to work in the morning. They may not want to interact with the community at times because they're just going to be constantly berated and insulted because they're not doing things the exact way fans want them to do it. And I think that's absolutely appalling. Fans cannot honestly expect that it's okay for them to say, we are fans of the series, you owe us this Bethesda, you owe us Fallout 4. Bethesda do not owe you shit. Because I guarantee you, and this is the third point that I wanted to make, fans say, oh, we just want to know that the game is in development, we don't want anything else. That's a load of bullshit. Because say if Bethesda or Pete Hines folds, and they just announce the game with no trailer, with no gameplay, with no demo, they just announce the game and saying, alright, we're working on Fallout 4, there you go, now you can stop bothering us. Fans aren't just going to be like, oh, that's great, thanks, Pete. Now we're going to sit tight for about a year or two and wait for a trailer or for a demo or for gameplay. Do you know what fans are going to be doing? They're going to say, oh, that's great. Now I really want to see some gameplay. Hey, Pete, where the fuck is my gameplay? Where the fuck is my demo? That's exactly what is going to happen because fans are just impatient. They've, they've shown that in their behavior in terms of bullying Pete Hines, in terms of trying to get an announcement of Fallout 4 out of him. So it's not going to be any different if they do announce Fallout 4 without the trailer because fans are always going to want that something more. Bethesda is not the problem here. The problem is, is fans being impatient and just throwing little tantrums because things aren't going their way. Because the fact is, and Pete Hines refers to this, is that as they did with Fallout 3, as they did with Skyrim, Bethesda will only announce a game when they have gameplay to back it up, when they have a demo to back it up. Because it's one thing to say, oh, this is going to be a really cool feature. For example, we're going to have co-op, but it's another thing to see that in the flesh and to see that working nicely and everything coming together with, you know, with true gameplay as opposed to just words. So if Pete Hines, say tomorrow, was forced to announce Fallout 4 for whatever reason, maybe he got pissed off, right? We're not going to be seeing gameplays or demos because they're clearly not ready for it. If they were ready for that, then we would have had a Fallout 4 announcement and they would have backed that up with gameplay and demos. But since they haven't done that, we're not going to be seeing gameplay or a demo for several months now. So even if Fallout 4 was announced today, we wouldn't see anything in game until later down the track. So why not wait until that stage? Why not wait for a really exciting announcement? that everybody is going to remember for years to come, as opposed to Pete Hines forcibly over Twitter saying, fine, we're working on Fallout 4, but that's all you can get because we're not ready for anything else. We're not ready to show you anything. We wanted to wait until that stage to make a magical announcement, to make something that fans could truly be excited for in the build-up towards the release of the game. Oh, fuck, man. So that's the video, guys. I'm going to stop it there because I'm getting angry and losing more of my voice. I'm sorry that I had to be sick, I couldn't really help it, but I really wanted to get this video out. Sorry if it was a bit hard to follow me at times, but I hope you still enjoyed it. Put your thoughts in the comments below, like and subscribe, and until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer, keep fighting the good fight.